In this video, I'm going to be showing you Code LLM, which is an AI code editor, and it allows you to access models like Sauna 3.5, DeepSeek R1, O1 Mini, as well as even O1. One thing to know with this, after I recorded this video, as soon as the OpenAI O3 Mini High model was released, they also included it within the editor. I'm not going to be showing you that model in this video, but just know that you will be able to access the full O3 Mini High model within the editor. This is what the platform looks like. So just to demonstrate some of the capabilities. First up is autocomplete. With autocomplete, there's two main ways that I usually use autocomplete. It's very similar to something like GitHub Copilot. If you've used that before, this will feel very familiar. One is first writing a comment of what you'd like the autocomplete to do. If I say, given two sorted arrays of nums one and nums two of size M and N respectively, return the median of the two sorted arrays in JavaScript. If I go to a new line here, we'll have a solution to the problem. What's neat with this is you can really just describe with natural language what you want to have happen. Here, if I just say CL, it knows that this is a console log. It has the context of what we're working in. It will also even give you the output of this invocation of that method. That's one particular way that you could use autocomplete. Now, the other way with autocomplete, the way that it works is if I go and I say something like player, and within this object, let's say I want a number of different aspects about the player. Now, if I specify weapons, it knows that this is potentially gonna be an array. And then within that array, it can be an object and we'll have a sword and we can just sort of go through. There's a bow, there's a dagger, you can specify the damage and you can just sort of continue and go through your workflow like that. This is the autocomplete feature. Now, another way that you can use this is if I just select everything and I command I, it will allow me to change whatever I have selected. If I just say, I want to change this to make it more complicated and have a better structure. And after I submit that, what it will return is a diff of what I asked for. Here's our updated player. And just like I asked, it's a fair bit more complicated. So we have our profile, we have our stats, we also have combat, and within that we have our weapons, we have inventory. And in that case, we used Sonnet 3.5. What you can also do is if I command I again, you also have access to all of these different models. Let's say it's a particularly tough problem. You can go ahead and send this directly to whether it's say DeepSeek R1 or O1. Now that we have our player and more or less a basic structure, if I go ahead and select this again, let's say I wanna use a really powerful model for the next generation. And I actually wanna have it generate the game for us. I'm gonna say based on this character, I want to generate a RPG game include everything I need within the JS to get started. I'll go ahead and I'll submit that. Now, if you've ever used an O1 model or R1, the one thing that you'll know with those models is they go through a process of thinking and reasoning. Depending on the query that you ask, it definitely will take a little bit more time. Here we see our diff, if I just go ahead and accept that. Within here, we have our player, we have our enemies, we, we have this attack enemy function, we have enemy attacks player, we have level up, we have start game, and we have all of these different aspects that we can continually build upon. And one of the big differences with Code LLM, where it is particularly unique when you compare it to some of these AI code editors, is it gives you a lot of access to O1. What you can also do is generate code within this panel here. Let's say I ask O1 and I say, I want to build Tetris completely from scratch. I want the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to be within one HTML file. Now, if you haven't used O1, it's incredibly powerful. Questions like this, oftentimes I find are pretty fun questions to ask some of the latest coding models. Within this panel, you have a few different options. So you can copy the code, you can insert it, or you can now apply similar to something like cursor. If I just were to insert this, for instance, we can see everything that we have here. We have quite a bit of code here. So it generated a few hundred lines for us. And let's just take a look at what it generated for us. So if I go ahead and I click start game here, we have Tetris, I'm able to move with my arrow keys. But one thing that I noticed is, as you see on the right hand side, there is this blank spot. So what I could do is let's say I don't wanna wait as long for O1, I could pivot back to Sonnet 3.5 and I could say, I noticed on the right hand side that there were two empty columns. 
help me resolve that issue. I'll go ahead and I'll send that through. Now, the great thing with Sonnet is it is considerably faster. Within here, we see that the issue occurs because we have 10 columns with 20 pixel blocks. We need the canvas width to be exactly 200 instead of 240. Just to demonstrate this, if I go and find the canvas element within the HTML, so there's our canvas. Now, if I just go and click this apply button, what it's going to do is it's going to take that file, it's gonna take that change, and it's just going to merge it within it here. Here we see that new change. We have width of 200 and we have height of 400. If I just save this out and I go back to our game here, there we go. It immediately made it smaller. The one thing in particular where this stands out from some of the other solutions that are out there is while a tool like this doesn't have access to tools like multi-file edit, or some of the other features that you see within some of the coding editors, what, what you do have access to are these frontier models and you have very generous rate limits. I'm gonna say, I want to continue building this to make it look professional and have a linear gradient background, a header and a footer and call it developers digest Tetris. We have our response back. Let's go ahead and we'll insert this. Now we have our file up to 376 lines of code. Let's save that out. Let's see what it looks like. And we have developers digest Tetris. It's a little bit better, but it's still not great, right? Let's say we didn't quite like that and we wanna take inspiration from the tetris.com site. What you can do is if I were to take a photo of this, for instance, and I go back to code LLM, what you'll be able to do is you can actually add and upload files within yours. I'm gonna say, I want my version of Tetris to be inspired by this website. Have a lot more color and make it look much more professional. Here we go, we can insert this. And again, we have quite a bit of code here. So we're up to 400 lines of code. If I go back to our Tetris game, it looks a bit better. Now, mind you, this is on the left-hand side. We would have to ask to fix that up or just fix it up ourself. Since I didn't quite like the response from O1, let's try Sonnet again. Let's just say I want to improve this and have the Tetris full screen. As you start to use some of these state-of-the-art models, you'll notice that some models do have particular strengths. Sonnet is really good at being able to get quick responses as well as overall pretty good code. I generally say that most people probably do use Sonnet day-to-day. -day. And so that's the nice thing with this is if you're really looking to use the absolute most powerful models for coding, this is really the only editor that I'm familiar of that allows you to access with very liberal rate limits, models like O1, R1, as well as Sonnet 3.5. A number of other solutions out there, they do give you a credit-based system where it's a number of tokens per month. To be able to access models like Sonnet 3.5 and O1 and O1 Mini, these are not cheap models. One thing that you'll notice with Code LLM is very quickly after new models come out, it's within short order that they roll them within their platform. And this is regardless of price or provider. If you wanna access O1 or DeepSeek, or let's say we have a state-of-the-art model that comes out from Anthropic, it will without a doubt be included within this as well. Now, another thing to note with the platforms, to access Code LLM, it does cost $10 per month. And within the subscription, you also have access to their web interface. When within here, there are a ton of web app features, but I'm not gonna to dive too much into chat LLM. I do have a video on this as well on my channel if you're interested in checking it out. But just to give you an idea, within here, you'll be able to access models like GPT-4.0, O1 Mini, O1, R1, and the list really goes on. They even have Grok, they have DeepSeek V3, they have the Llama series of models, and there are really just a ton of features built into this. Now, the other thing with this, you can easily select the context of the different items that you like. You can also individually select if you want to reference this piece of JavaScript that we wrote and the HTML, you can pass in the context just like that. And you can also just chat with it as well. So I could say something like, what does the reset button do? Explain how it works, for instance. I'll go ahead and I'll submit that. And within here, it will give us a description of what it's doing. Here's our response. Looking at the code, the reset button functionality works as follows. The reset button has an event listener that triggers these actions when clicked. We can see all of the different steps here. It even gave comments describing what each aspect is doing, and it gives a further description as we go on. That can be a potential use case. If there's something that is maybe a pretty hairy bug within your code, 
you can just pivot to 01, know that you're getting the state-of-the-art model. You don't have to copy and paste things within something like ChatGPT. You'll be able to quickly just reference that piece of context within your code base by selecting those relevant pieces and including them just like that. So next within this list, we see that we do have something called code LLM. What this will do is if I ask a particular query, if I ask something like in my HTML, I want to improve this, make it look more professional and add in a few navigation items and a professional looking footer. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll send that through. Now, as soon as I sent that in, you see that it grabbed the relevant context of the example that that we have within our workspace. What that's done is it's used some form of model router to effectively triage that request. So if you haven't used model routers before, how they work is it will take a very quick look at your request and it will determine, okay, should this use Sonnet? And you don't have to worry about pivoting back and forth it will go ahead and attempt to use the best model for the job, depending on the request. So, and the other thing that I wanna to mention to close out the video is at time of recording, they're actually offering an unlimited quota as an introductory offer for some time to be able to access O1, O1 Mini, DeepSeek R1, Quen, Sonnet 3.5. And I wouldn't be surprised as soon as we start to see other models, whether it's from Anthropic or Google models that are particularly good at code, we'll also see them rolled within a platform like this. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.